Hey there, welcome to the E-Commerce Alley podcast where we believe that great brands are built on passionate leadership, smart operations, and of course, powerful marketing. I am your host, Josh Coffey, and today I have an amazing guest of honor, Cindy Thomason. And we're gonna be talking about things that we love and we hate, which is our finances, but you know what we love? We love profits. And so Cindy is going to be diving deep into this. She is an expert in this subject. So if you're an e-commerce business owner, listen up because you need to hear what she has to say. Cindy, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you, Josh. I'm excited to be here too. Yeah, yeah. So um, before we do, before we kind of dive into this, um, I do want to kind of let everyone know a little bit about who you are and, and kind of how I have come to find you. Um, and so if you've never heard of Cindy uh, Thomason, she is uh, she is the author of a bestselling book called Profit First for E-Commerce Sellers, which if you've never read, by the way, go to Amazon. I mean, you could pause the podcast right now. Please go to Amazon, buy this book. It is an absolute game changer uh, for you. She is a mastery level certified profit first professional. And I didn't know this. So you're a certified fix this next coach, um, which is if, if no one's ever heard of it, there's a book by a man named Mike McCallowitz called fix this next, which that was a game changer for me too. Uh, kind of how I viewed business and I didn't know that. So that's pretty cool. So you're also a certified coach in that and you own books keep with, I mean, I don't even know how many people you have now, but from what I gathered, you have a good amount of people that are helping e-com sellers, uh, manage their finances and generate and manage their profits as well. That's right. We have about 25 people now. Oh my goodness. So I listened to a podcast and I think you were mentioning 17 and I don't think it was like that long ago that I listened to the podcast with you. <laughs> yeah, we are growing fast. <laughs> I, we are. That's, that's really awesome, Cindy. Um, and I think that it, should, it just kind of shows who you are and what you really bring to the table when you, when you see businesses start to grow like that. So... So that's awesome. Um, I do want to, and I'm, I'm curious to kind of get going here for everybody listening or watching right now. Um, can you kind of walk us through like your origin? Like how did you come to this point of running this business with 25 people doing books keep? Well, I was a stay at home mom and my, um, my daughter needed some tutoring about the same time as a friend of mine needed some help. And I had a corporate career, um, and I, I just went to help my girlfriend. And at the end, she asked if I could stay on. And as a part of working with her, I got really involved in helping her get her uh, accounting set up and working properly. And mm -hmm. I, I was doing this by going to her home. But part of what was happening at the time was QuickBooks was moving to an online platform. And so I realized, hey, I could do this from home, not have to worry about what my daughter was, you know, doing, finding a place for her. Um, and I could do it from anywhere, actually. So I decided to really focus and build a business around um, online accounting. And um, I went to the first ever uh, QuickBooks Connect conference. And I was, it was, I remember it really well. I was sitting in a, in a, um, a classroom after lunch and I, it was all I could do to stay awake, you know, and you know how you, <laughs> your eyes get heavy and you just yeah. think it was so boring. I don't even know what it was, but the people in the room next door were laughing so hard and I'm like, I'm going to go over there. So I did, I got up and I went to the other room and that was a moment that changed my life because Mike McCallowitz was presenting on Profit First. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the presentation, he gave out a book and I read it on the plane on the way home. And I'm like, this is what my clients need. All of them. Mm. At that point, I wasn't focusing on e-commerce. It was more of a traditional local um, bookkeeping business. Mm -hmm. And but I knew people were struggling and I'm like, how is my business going to be sustainable if they can't? pay their bills, you know? So I decided, I called, um, called the office. Uh, I met Mike at that conference in October. I called and I had joined Profit First in November. And uh, I think I'm number nine uh, on the, uh, on the list there. And it has totally changed everything about my business because first of all, I started doing profit first. I wasn't profitable myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I started doing profit first and taking my paycheck, just like we recommend for everybody in the, in the book. But Mike also started coaching me and I was, um, he coached me through the time he wrote the book clockwork, um, mm -hmm. 
fix this next and um, and still is a mentor to me uh, in in the things that I'm doing now. So, uh, like I said, Mike changed Mike changed my life that afternoon. Wow. So uh, so what does it mean? So you mentioned you're like number nine for profit for a second. What do you mean by that? Well, Mike created, he realized that for people to implement Profit First effectively, that they might not be able to do it on their own, that, that he was getting a lot of emails with questions. So he created an organization, Profit First Professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, he founded that with a partner, Ron Saharian. And the two of them um, started just providing us with extra training, um, access to Mike to get our questions answered, which, you know, was kind of funny because Mike is a real big picture guy. And so you would, you'd call Mike and ask him a question. He goes, I don't know, you need to figure that out. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so we would figure it out. A lot of us would talk and try to figure things out. So it really has developed since then. Um, internationally, there's over 700 members and over, wow. um, I think it's around 500 in the United States. And, um, it's it's just a really great organization in terms of supporting each other as we go about trying to help people um, make sure that their businesses are profitable and that they're serving them. Wow. That's amazing. And I love, I'm so glad that he rolled out Profit First Professionals because now we've never hired one personally. Um, I'm one of those guys that like, hey, I got to get my hands dirty and do this all myself. But we, just for anybody listening, like we actually, our business implemented this, our first business, and we have some other real estate business as well, and we implemented that from day one, but in our current business, uh, our agency, we were in, we were in the hole, I mean, we were tens of thousands of dollars in debt, we were literally living payroll to payroll, uh, we never took profits, we'd get to tax season every year, and we would owe $20,000, and we would have like $2 in our account for that because we didn't allocate, and I will say this, personally, since doing this, and this was probably four or five years ago that we began our journey, um, within, it took, it took a process. So it was like three years, but within three years, we were entirely debt free. We've been doing profit sharing every quarter for the last five quarters now, uh, with us and with our team. And now tax season is fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it the best thing to, to have your tax accountant call you and say, I I've got bad news? Well, it's really good news. You made a profit, right? You've got something that's taxable mm -hmm. and you've got the money set aside. I, I, I love those conversations. I will, I will say that happened to me. It was, it was the final year in year three is we had like 28,000 allotted for taxes based on profit first that anyone listening, we're going to definitely dive into that. Um, <laughs> We, but we owed 18. So it was basically, mm -hmm. while everyone's dreading tax season like I did every year, I got to take a $10,000 bonus between us and our business partner um, on tax day, which is the opposite yeah. of what most people experience. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great place to be for sure. <laughs> it is, it is. And so I'm excited that you're here because I, I've had that, that experience personally and it's very uh, near and dear to me and I know how it feels to be on the side before that, you know, these steps and implementing profit first. Mm -hmm. So if you're all right with it, I would love to dive into, um, profit first a little bit. And if you could, for, for anyone listening, can you, can you kind of break down what is profit first as a whole from like a high level? Sure. It's, it's really a cash management strategy. Um, everybody's always concerned about their profitability, which is important. But in our bookkeeping, in our accounting, profitability really is um, a paper <laughs> number. What really matters is the cash that you have in your bank. Um, if you have a good bottom line on your P&L, but you have so much debt, it, it doesn't feel quite the same as having a big bank account and maybe just a little smaller <laughs> bottom line. So mm -hmm. um, the, the, the whole strategy is built around um, having true profit that is based on what the profits you have in your bank account. And it's um, the way you implement it is by having multiple bank accounts, much like the envelope systems that, you know, maybe your grandmother had. I know my grandmother had one. Mike talks about his grandmother having one, you yeah. know, where the grocery money had an envelope, the, the um, you know, she would save for Christmas all year, all year round. And mm -hmm. this is, we're doing the same kind of thing for our business, basically giving our bank accounts a purpose. 
What is this money for? And so by setting up a few bank accounts, you can really get clarity about how much you have to spend on specific items. And the thing that kind of is the undercurrent to all of it that makes it all work, because we're humans, it it deals with our human behavior, is uh, a law called Parkinson's Law. It's an economic principle. And it was developed in the 1950s by um, Cyrus Northcote Parkinson. He was a British naval historian, and he studied... um, He studied bureaucracies in the British Navy, and what he learned is that basically we use what we've got. So if you've got a lot of something, you're more free with how you use those resources. If you have a smaller amount of something, then you are more, um, more careful and you conserve a little more. I know when I travel back pre-COVID and I was traveling a lot, I had a small little tube of toothpaste that would be in my uh, travel bag. I I was always careful, you know, just a a little bit of toothpaste. But I'm at home with the big, long tube of toothpaste. You you, you just don't think about it. You just, you've put a lot more toothpaste on your toothbrush, right? Your frivolous toothpaster when you have a big tube completely full. (laughs) Yeah, we all are, I think. So. I love it. <laughs> so, so now, um, you know, the idea is the same thing happens with our time. The same thing happens with our money. It, it really applies to any resource, any resource that we have. When we think there's a lot of it, we are just more, we're, we're less careful about how we use something. Mm-hmm. And so un- knowing that about our human behavior, Profit First kind of works with that. And by separating out that big bank account, you know, most businesses operate with one primary checking account. And by separating out the money in that checking account for specific purposes, like one of the things I always recommend to my clients is have a separate bank account for inventory. Inventory has a very different cash flow cycle than your operating expenses. So put that money aside because as as you're getting your payouts from Amazon, for example, you know a portion of that is going to have to be used to buy more inventory to replenish what you just sold. Mm -hmm. So just by when that money comes in, you separate it out and put it in a bank account earmarked for that purpose, um, you're setting yourself up to be able to Uh, fund the additional inventory that you're going to need. Some Mm. of my clients add a little bit extra to it because they know they're going to roll out a new product. Um, So it's just the idea of, of using our, our own human nature and how we approach resources and creating those separate bank accounts so that they they have a purpose in our business, that money has a purpose. And we can see clearly that we're putting it aside for inventory and not spending it on something else um, because it's earmarked for that particular purpose. I think that's that's the that's the gist of it. You know, it's um, you know, I wrote that down. So inventory account for replenishing um, for replenish purchases. I had, now I couldn't put this into words before you probably did that because we had a client maybe a year ago, they were a client um, that we did marketing with and they exploded in year one. They did like 600 grand in revenue year one with their e-commerce products. And uh, so it started taking off. Well, unfortunately, they sold a higher ticket item and it had 100 minimum order quantities and so they had to place a $200,000 order in order to hit the minimum order quantity for this large product. So they did 600 grand in year one. You get excited. You see all that revenue sitting in the account, right? And um, we didn't realize this till after the fact, but essentially what happened is a uh, great human being made a bad decision and started spending like the toothpaste analogy because it looks like a lot. And then what ended up happening was they ended, they had to shut down the business with $180,000 in debt after all these refunds they had to, to, to give out because they couldn't fulfill the orders that they were selling in advance to try. It was like the Rob Peter to pay Paul kind of a situation. And, uh, and it ended up putting them under. So I, so you're saying inventory account is cash comes in. You need to have an account that, you're putting cash in in, to prepare for the replenishing of that and more. Yeah. 
you know, one of the things I see happen a lot with um, new um, sellers entering um, the e-commerce businesses is they they take some nest egg that they have and they spend it all on that very first product that they're wanting to, to introduce. And, and, you know, they think the worst outcome is that they don't sell it. But honestly, the worst outcome is that they sell it quickly and they can't replenish it because they haven't gotten enough of the funds in their bank account yet to place that second order. So they immediately go into a stock out because depending on where it's manufactured, it takes a while to get here. Mm. So I always recommend people plan for success. Don't spend all of your money on that first product. Have some of it sitting in reserve so that you're ready to pull the trigger on that second product. Because you know, it's one thing for something not not to take off. You can blame the market, you can blame the weather, <laughs> but mm -hmm. whenever something does take off and you're not able to meet the need, um, then you kind of have to look in the mirror, and um, that's a lot more uncomfortable. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, and so so the inventory count I know you mentioned is one. And so, like, what if I was to get started? Let's say uh, this is the first time kind of hearing this. Um, what are those first? Uh, you mentioned all these accounts. Like, what are the first accounts that you would recommend opening, and how would those kind of work together? Like, how would I know what to transfer to what, or how they would work? Okay. Okay. Well, let me first explain that um, there's two approaches. One approach would be to um, jump off a cliff into the ocean. The other <laughs> approach would be to kind of walk in from the beach. I'm a walk in from the beach kind of gal because I have seen when people jump in too quickly without the ability to um, to really understand their cash flow. Most people are going into this without really understanding what's going on. And most people don't have a big bank account to just put extra cash in all the accounts. Mm -hmm. So my approach for people to start is create you have a, a basic account where maybe it's your business checking account where the money's going to come into. We're going to keep that account. I would open two more accounts. One account is could be checking or savings. Um, savings, you might get a little bit of interest, mm -hmm. but a savings account for profit and then another checking account for inventory. And when you get your payouts from Amazon, um, what you want to do is to look at, all right, what did I sell that um, just that generated that revenue mm -hmm. and how much is that worth? And I would immediately take that amount off the top. So say you sold 10,000, you got $10,000 in your settlement from Amazon and it represents uh, goods value of $3,000 that you have to replace, move that over into your inventory bank account. So you're sitting there left with $7,000 you look at that and say, all right, I'm going to put some of this in my profit account. I recommend people start with 1%. Now, if you know your numbers and you can do better than that, that's great. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about easing in to the, from the beach. And yeah. so we take 1% and we put it over into our profit account. And so basically 1% of that $7,000, you are talking about, what is that, $70? $70. That you're going to move over there? Yeah, $70. Um, the rest of it, you just leave in that operating expense account and you do business as you normally would. Now, for some people, that's a huge shock to their system because they've been working off of this inventory float, if you will. The money that they've received into their one bank account, they're using all the time for advertising and other things. Mm -hmm. And... Um, then they get hit with that bill for inventory and they're scrambling and have to take out, you know, put it on their credit card and take out a loan, et cetera. We're preparing so that you don't have to do that, that you've got the money. But it does create a little bit of a shock to the system. So you have to watch your checking account carefully to be sure that you're not in a situation where you're going to run out of money. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and it's not, it's not, the end of the world, if you have to move some back and, and you have to maybe do this on a weekly basis, we typically recommend people um, doing their transfers, getting, you know, getting their money in and doing their transfers to these accounts every two weeks. That's a really good time frame to start to um, 
really learn the patterns of what comes due when is the first of the month. Uh, um, you know, do you have to pay a lot more out in the first of the month than the back half of the month? You, what you're really doing by using these bank accounts and looking at your bank balances is you're starting to learn the patterns of how money flows through your business. And if you're in there moving money every day, you can't see those patterns. But sometimes when people first get started, they need to do it more often. They need to do those transfers more often than um, once every two weeks. So mm -hmm. I suggest people start another beach entry type approach is do it weekly. If you're getting um, payouts on more often than every two weeks, then do it weekly. Um, work your way up to being able to do it every two weeks. But, but that's how I recommend people start. Because I don't okay. know who else is going to hear this, and, and you know whether what the, what's in their bank account. Um, does that make sense? Because I can explain a little more um, advanced use of it, but I want to be sure that makes sense. Yeah. So just to kind of recap what <clears throat> I've kind of doodled down here. Um, so everything goes into the checking. So if you had ten thousand go in, all goes into the initial checking or operating expense account, and then you transfer the cost of goods sold immediately to inventory. And if you're just starting, like if you've never taken profit before, you open a profit account and then you transfer the beach approach 1% to that. So $70. Correct. Right. All right. That's, that's how it works. So I, I and love it. And then all it. your other normal bills are coming out of your, out of that checking account where the money, the rest of the money resides. So in that, in that, in that approach, so there's three primary accounts that you recommend. And I know you can get, you could probably have 22 accounts if you were big enough and it really made enough <laughs> sense in your you can manage yeah. that, I guess. Uh, so is this like those first steps that you recommend people take, like these three as the initial phase? Yes. Okay. Do that. Get the feel for it. Get you, Learn about your cash flow. And then once you've got that handled and feel like you understand what's going on, then the next step that I recommend for people is to set up a owner pay account and a tax account. And at that point, you've got kind of the full suite of uh, accounts that Mike talks about in his book and that mm -hmm. I talk about in my book. You want to get yourself in a position where you're always, um, when you do your allocations and you've moved money to your inventory account and you've moved money to your profit account, you also want to then move some money over to pay yourself and to pay set aside money for your taxes. And then you're left with what's left in that operating checking account. And the reason I, I suggest people ease into that is because many times people aren't paying themselves at all. What we were talking about in that first scenario, these are funds that have been coming and going for a while, all but that one little 1%. But when you start taking out 15% for taxes and, you know, 50% for paying yourself, then mm -hmm. you're, you're setting yourself up to be operating at a much smaller level. There's going to be a lot less money in your bank account. So when you create those two additional accounts, the owner pay and the taxes, I suggest you ease into that as well. If you haven't been paying yourself, then it's going to be a little bit of a shock to your system to, to take that money out. So figure out, you know, what look back, what kind of draws or what kind of paychecks have you been taking and use that to be the, the place that you start because your, your business has operated at that level. You probably can sustain it. The timing can be a little bit of an issue, but overall, you know you're you can figure out the timing and that it will work. Most of, um, most of my clients are not doing the full 15%. Mm -hmm. So I recommend, you know, as you're working on what your tax percentage is, it's a great thing to check in with your CPA. Mm -hmm. Look at how your business is performing. If your business is not making up money and you're, you're operating at a loss, the last thing you want to do is take all your cash and put it into an account for taxes when you're not going to owe any taxes, right? Yeah. So you want to you want to be mindful of what um, what your actual situation is and adjust that tax percentage to be something that's realistic. But it's a good habit to get into, even if you only put one or two percent in that tax account, to start realizing that, you know, as you get profitable, that's a factor. And you want to be setting money aside so you can be like Josh and have ten thousand dollars to pay <laughs> as a bonus at on tax day, right? So I do recommend those two additional accounts. Um 
And then, as you mentioned, there's I've got client. Well, actually, he just sold this past year, but I have a client that had up to 23 bank accounts. And, oh, wow. And One he, more than he, I mentioned. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> he did. He had 23. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and it was brilliant how he used it. And so I, I loved what he did with it because he basically looked at his whole year's worth of expenses and said, OK, each bank account is going to act like a budget for me. I'm putting money in there, and then I don't know exactly what my shipping cost is going to be. Mm-hmm. But last year it was around, you know, six percent. So I'm putting six percent of my, you know, in his allocation in, into into his shipping account, and and he watched it. And by looking at those bank balances, after you know every two weeks, he would be able to see, okay, my shipping account's getting really big. Am I being billed for shipping or am I being more efficient with shipping this year? And maybe I need to deploy that money somewhere else. The other, the other thing that he, he used was uh, for advertising. Mm, I was going to, I was going to ask about that. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, have you used, have you used an account for that? So we haven't used an account. And I was going to ask you because I have e-commerce businesses in our community ask all the time about how to, today I had two people asking me, uh, how much do I spend on advertising and how do I plan for that? So I want to hear from you. How would you do it? What would you say in that situation? The, I can tell you from looking at hundreds of accounts, um, there is no number. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I've seen numbers out there. I know when I wrote the book, I did um, a lot of analysis, and I was uh, I was confident in saying six percent at that point. Um, I, the whole world has changed, and and that number I'm not as confident in anymore. Mm-hmm. I see clients thinking that they have to spend thirty percent. Wow. Um, I see other clients that sp- spend almost nothing. So I don't have a good benchmark that I can tell you, but I can tell you how to be ready to pay your advertising, and um, what what I recommend folks do as they're ready to implement. Say you've got your your um, accounts we just talked about and you're ready to to get a little more advanced Mm -hmm. then i would recommend setting up an advertising account and look look at what you're you know you have been paying for advertising already look at what um percentage that is out of your um out of your opex checking account that Mm -hmm. you've been using try to understand how much you've been spending and then you can come up with that percentage based on your history Then you can just put it over into this advertising bank account. And here's what I love about this. As you're allocating that percentage, let's say it's 6%. As you're allocating that 6% over into your your bank account, if your advertising is working, theoretically, your revenues are going to go up. Mm -hmm. So your advertising budget should be going up as well. And what I have seen over and over for people is they spend more and more money on advertising and they're not seeing a uh, commensurate um, increase in revenue. I would think if you're spending, I'm not an advertising person, but on anything that I spend money on, I'm wanting to be sure it's going to pay, pay back more than what I'm spending for the Mm -hmm. most part. So advertising should generate much more in terms of revenue than what your cost is. And by being able to, see what your bank account is doing with advertising, you can tell very quickly whether or not your advertising is performing. And one one example I had with a client is he was doing profit first and I was watching, watching his dollars (laughs) and I was watching how he would, he used credit cards. A lot of our clients use credit cards and, um, he always would have the money set aside in his account to pay that credit card bill. That's, that's one of the things I recommend. You, you, credit cards are a good tool, but you need to be sure you got the money to, to fund them, right? Mm-hmm. So I was watching, and I'm like, he's getting, he's getting overextended on these credit cards. What's going on? I, we would talk about it. Well, his advertising costs were going up significantly, mm. and... I couldn't get his attention on it, but after six months, he realized that he had spent over two hundred thousand on advertising in that six-month period, and his revenue had only gone up fifty thousand. 
Ooh. Now, he was getting lots of great reports from his advertising agency. Wow. But, I, you know, all, all the clicks and the likes and whatever, unless it puts money in your pocket, you're not getting a return. And mm. so we set him up with this uh, structure so that, you know, if that advertising is working, you're going to actually see more money go into that account. You're not going to be having to um, deplete that account for um, to, to continue to pay more and more for something whenever you're not getting a return. Yeah, I, I that's a sad story. <laughs> that stinks. Yeah. Um, and I, I can yeah. I know so many people can resonate with that too, um, where where you you go based on your gut emotion and you don't go based on the the math of it. And something that our team so we do advertising a lot and we teach people and we coach e commerce brands on how to do those kinds of things. And one thing I say all the time is I say uh, trust the math, not your gut. Everything has to be driven by the numbers. And what I will say that I love about this and about profit first is that there's no set number it's based on a percentage so if you're smart and you yeah. live within those percentages and you're wise about that of course you have to make sure your marketing is profitable or it'll bleed you like that um, then it, you'll, it's really a path and it feels like you have control I think that's probably the biggest thing like I felt like I was out of control and the front of your book you know it says transform your e-commerce business from a cash eating monster in mon to a money making machine and I think that that's, that's how I felt. I felt that from the outside looking in, our business looked great. I remember being on vacation and, and everything looked good. I was with my family and all this, and I had a dollar and six cents in my bank account before I had to run like a $10,000 payroll like four days later. <laughs> Calling my in-laws, yeah. the most embarrassing call in the world. And, yeah. and it, yeah. it, it, it's, it's so real, but it gives you a sense of control. Um, and you, yeah. you have so much more on this that um w like what's that first step i i know we can't spend we could probably sit here for three hours to break down everything <laughs> that you know on so many aspects of economics of units of inventory and and how to manage this properly and percentages and so forth but like what's the first thing you recommend people do to start diving into the profit first concept or diving into this it's really to set up those two bank accounts. If you will, if you will set up your inventory bank account and set up a profit account, and start moving your money into those accounts from that day forward, you're profitable because you've set money aside for profits. It's not dependent on what shows up on the bottom line of of a QuickBooks report. Mm -hmm. It's dependent on the fact that you've actually put money in a bank account for profits. And we probably should talk about profits just a minute because mm -hmm. the idea is you're putting money aside, but that money has a purpose too. And part of that purpose is every quarter, you're going to take half of it out to reward yourself and to reward your family for putting up with you being a grumpy entrepreneur working all the time, right? <laughs> and so so you can take that. your family. I mean, maybe the first time it's, it's um, the, we had a, someone write me the other day and I loved it. She was, she was, um, she was taking her profit check, her first profit check, and she was going to have um, her eyebrows uh, microbladed. I'm like, oh my God, sounds so painful. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, everybody has their thing yeah. that, that, you know, is a reward. So figure out what's a reward for you. What's a reward for your family. You take that money out and you go and you do something to reward yourself. It's the strongest thing we can do as business owners mm -hmm. to celebrate success. We mm -hmm. all are every day focused on what's not going well. This is one time that you are forced to focus on, I generated this profit. And maybe maybe it's just going to the coffee house and having a nice uh, coffee that I would splurge on. But as you do this and as it grows, it, it creates a habit that, um, that, uh, that makes you realize why you're really in business and, and um, not feeling like you've created a monster. Now, then there's the other half that's sitting around in that profit account, and it's got a purpose, too. It's going to grow over time, and as it grows, it's giving you kind of a backstop for when something happens that's not expected, like Amazon loses your inventory or or a pandemic, you know? Yeah. I mean, things that we yeah. just never thought would happen have happened, right? So having a... Um, having a bank account that has a little cash in it to help you get through those unexpected things um, keeps you from having to make those uncomfortable phone calls to the in-laws, right? 
Absolutely. So I get to the end of the quarter and if I have a thousand bucks, I'm going to keep 500 in cash in reserves for rainy days. And I'm going to go spend 500 bucks doing something I enjoy or whatever brings me happiness. To right. pay, but you're not to, putting it back in the business. But you're not putting it back in the business. Yes. So that's the one. The is that the rule? I can't put it back in the business. Then. That's the rule. <laughs> I love it. Because you know, um, and it's not from the standpoint of. Um, I mean, part of it is generating that that sense of celebration. Mm -hmm. But the other part of it is if you're co constantly putting in cash into the business, you're you're contributing back to that um, um, Parkinson's law in a way that's negative on the business. So you put your 500 back in the business and then it looks like, well, I've got more money to spend on something and you start to become less frugal, uh, less innovative, um, less efficient because when there's a lot of something, we find things to do with that money. So mm -hmm. you are forced to operate more carefully if that money leaves the business. And that's the pressure that you want on your business because if you're not operating that way, I can guarantee you somebody else in your space is going to be and they'll eat your lunch. Hmm. I, I was reading a uh, in Forbes, I was reading a few weeks ago, um, and I did a podcast on why most e-commerce businesses fail, and Forbes did this huge like case study with thousands of businesses. Number one reason was poor money management, and I think that this is honestly the best solution I've ever come across for business. I mean, I'm a financial nerd, so in my personal life, like I'm budgeting and I'm allocating for all these different things and building wealth and, and we're almost debt free and, and all of these things. But business is a whole different deal, especially when you start to factor in employees and you start to think about taxes and then inventory and then you're not paying your taxes and then it's April and you owe $18,000. Um, it yeah. can just destroy your happiness that you go into business wanting to do, but because of poor money management, it just, it makes it miserable. It makes it not what you thought, you know, and it just, you're just grinding it out to grind it out and living payroll to payroll yeah. instead of paycheck to paycheck. I think that's what yeah, I love about it, exactly. it so much. Yeah, exactly. It can, all, you know, and it seems so simple, but the reality is it puts the pressure on what you need to pay attention to. It doesn't mm -hmm. make it easy. It just makes you pay attention to the right things. And then once you pay attention to the right things, we're pretty good at problem solving. So take, you know, once you see if gross margin is a problem, okay, what can I do about that? And start working to, to resolve those issues. Um, it, I, I do have people that come and think that profit first is the answer to every solution. And I mean, the solution to every problem. And it, it, it isn't. I mean, it is a solution for money management issues. But if you've got problems where you're not making gross margin, then those issues, um, you don't have the cash to do this allocation. Hmm. Again, it's a problem that can be solved. But now you know where to pay attention to solving that problem. Yeah, I, I love that. And so I have, uh, what is the question? What is the craziest or the most out there thing that you've seen one of your clients use their profit share on? Oh, or one of the coolest. I don't know that it was the coolest, but it touched me. Um, okay. One of, one of the people, um, one of my clients used their money to go, um, spend, several weeks with her uh, daughter that was going through some serious health issues and she was able to fund all of her time and um, airfare and and really support her daughter during a time whenever she had a, a health scare and um, you know she wrote and told me what that meant to her and that's that's the one that I remember because uh, you know you it's nice to be able to do all the fun, cool stuff. And, um, but to be able to be there when somebody really, really needs you, that to mm -hmm. me is what being in business and, and having a profit account. Um, that's a real success story to me. Ah, uh, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's amazing. I think that, yeah, when you have that control of finance and you don't feel like you're under that burden and you can do things like that, like that is why you get into business. You know, that's, that's that yeah. inner why, you know, that really drives mm -hmm. people. I believe that's, that's powerful. Yeah. 
I love it. Yeah. Well, Cindy, I want to say thank you for joining us. But before we do go, what I want to do um, is I want to read something from this to kind of close out uh, that you that you wrote. And and this is this I thought this was fantastic. So if you're if you're feeling like this right now, I want to I want you to first of all read Cindy's book. But it says this. It says the e-commerce industry is one of the greatest opportunities of our time, but it also has a downside. While the barriers to entry are low, the cost to continue to play is buying more inventory. If margins are not consistently above 30% and if inventory spending gets out of hand, the bottom line can go into the red very quickly. The time to start pri prioritizing profit is now. Don't wait until the hole you've dug is too deep to crawl out. And I, I took a note of that when I read it because when I talk to you, I, that's how I feel. I feel that um, there's so much opportunity and opportunity, especially now, is greater than ever for e-commerce businesses, but too many are getting in that hole and they're waiting too late to try to crawl out. So I think everyone has those moments in life where something hits them and if, and if this podcast can help somebody listening right now not get hit by that and not wait till it's too late, then I think that this, this would have served its job. And um, so I wanted to read that. If you guys haven't read the book, Profit First for E-commerce Sellers, go find that on Amazon. And then Cindy, you have a course as well, which I didn't know, which is fantastic, <laughs> um, where you walk through all of this stuff. Yeah, we go through chapter by chapter um, the stuff where um, sometimes people are a little intimidated by numbers mm -hmm. and the book, uh, th they write to me. So I, I knew they were struggling with some of the pieces of it. Um, so we created a course that um, allows people to go through with a little bit more handholding. Um, and and there's a Facebook group along with that course where we support each other going through the program. So, um, yeah, it's meant just to be a little bit more hand-holding for those folks who want to do it themselves, but just uh, have have a little bit of concern about can they do it themselves. Yeah, I love that. So here's what we're going to do. Um, go to allypodcast.com slash Cindy, C-Y-N-D-I, and we're going to have it direct to that page. Please buy, the, oh, buy her book, Implement Profit First, guys. It will change your life, uh, Cindy. I appreciate you being on. And for everybody listening, you have been listening to the E-Commerce Alley podcast produced by legendary Dylan Counts. You can find show notes for this episode as well as other resources to Cindy and the things we talked about today by going to alleypodcast.com. Com. You can join the e-commerce alley Facebook group absolutely free by going to alleypodcast.com slash group. So on behalf of our team and Cindy, we want to say thank you for listening and thank you uh, for making the world a better place with your products. We will see you in the next episode.